And here they are, of course, winning the die roll, a big, big deal. And uh, as we saw, uh, Lorenzo won the die roll, which uh, might be relevant, especially yeah, in, in absolutely. this. Absolutely, names yeah. are switched and we are going to fix it right away. But when you go first with this deck, I'm really interested in his plan, because usually we see runic cars either by themselves or with Sprite. For now, though, we'll get to see the Perle Rhino. Let's see. So uh, maybe he got the Shireen, I couldn't quite tell, but it seems as if uh, for now he's relying more on the Tillman package than the Runic. Uh, yeah, and he goes right away, I think, with the Shireen. Let's see what he's going to discard. It is... Three mils gamma and a couple of runic spells, uh, which uh, to be fair is not that bad because afterwards when you get to the fountain, if you do, having multiples in graveyard just means more draws at the moment. And uh, what I really like about Lorenzo's deck is playing the one copy of Rainbow Bridge of Salvation, which we might be seeing during this duel. And I think the card is very powerful, especially because you get to banish it and the search from one of your sp field spell from the deck. So mm. here he has the option, of course, of the famous mill eight, uh, but he decides to go right away for the Rhino Heart. Uh, maybe he didn't open any of the yeah, runic cards. Might be. It could possibly yeah. be the case. Which would be unfortunate, we are really in it for that reason, but maybe he will try and access one of these other tech cars. Okay. Okay, he does. So this is one of the cars we have not seen too much of. It is the Runic Dispelling, which is pretty much similar to Drop Off, Drastic Drop Off, that kind of card which essentially when your opponent adds a card from their deck to their end, you can discard a random card from their end. Uh, but it's there, as you can see, to just uh, go for the fountain. Yeah, it's another name, basically, to go yes. for. Yeah. And this is actually huge, because if he has another spell, this is already a draw free from the runic. Exactly. And so. uh, we get to see the Rainbow Bridge of Salvation being activated. Yep. This is very powerful. As you said, you get, basically, you get to see the, the runic fountain uh, only one car, so it's, it's, it's great. And uh, this is uh, incredible just to witness it. Uh, Crystal Beast uh, Emerald Tortoise being played in 2022 in a top 16 deck. Uh, it's uh, really fun to witness, but of course it's there because, as you mentioned, you can just use it alongside the trap and get a couple of searches. And yeah, as he sends uh, sharing uh, from the deck to the graveyard. And he's going to mill. Yeah, let's see these mills. It's again super polymerization, the sharing, the driver, the Merli, which he already used, uh, but... He's going to have a few options, uh, and I think this is an interesting take on the deck, really. I do like it. Yeah, I mean, this is something that uh, we haven't seen at all during this weekend, but uh, this the synergy that the deck has, uh, I, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of it, honestly. I agree. I agree. Although, we got to say, Daniele doesn't look too impressed by <laughs> this opening, or maybe he's just getting scared. Uh, I would be surprised if they didn't know what each other is playing. Uh, we could get to an Abyss Dweller uh, later on, uh, which uh, would be devastating, yeah. uh, of course. And also, I think Lorenzo deck is studied uh, like uh, card by card, because yeah. looking at the extra deck as well, everything is mostly one-offs. Let's see if he wants to go right away for the Abyss Dweller here. As I mentioned, uh, 
chances are he knows what he's up against. And we do see the Abyss Dweller coming down as expected. Such a strong opening from the Italian. Yeah, very good stuff from him because basically here you get uh, other cards from the fountain, then you have the Dweller and the Elf which protects it and uh, I mean, really like it. Yeah, now we just uh, use it to get back a Gamma. Sets one and I think the play will be back to Daniele which uh, is gonna struggle against this Abyss Dweller being activated right away in the draw phase. Uh, let's see what the other Italian is gonna try and do. So Let's see if maybe Daniele has an impermanence. Uh yeah, I mean, he's playing impermanence. Yeah. Uh, outside of that, does he really have anything going on? I don't think so, right? No, he doesn't. He does not. So... Let's see, at the same time, he is playing, as mentioned, a very interesting engine with the Star Frost in his deck. Three copies of it, yeah. to be precise. So, let's see. And I really like that uh, we hopefully we will get to see the Scareclaw, which um, actually are very useful because if you control three of them yeah. in defense, also you, it is an auto Mystic Mine. Let's see if Daniele will be able to push through with some of these Scareclaw cards. Uh, for now, he's just gonna add one to his end with the Perla Rhino. Let's see. Oh, and there is the Dark Ruler, wow. which, of course, not that impactful. Well played here by Lorenzo. He probably saw it uh, earlier on, uh, and that's one additional reason why he shotgunned the Dweller in the draw phase. But now, yeah, it just gets to send oh, three copies. Uh, those would have been nice in the end, uh, not quite in the graveyard. Uh, and this looks like it's a very weak start from Daniele. But here comes uh, the vices from the end. Uh, first time I think we have seen it yeah. uh, this weekend. Uh, as you can see, you can just target a monster you control, destroy it, special summon it, uh, and it is able to just push forward. So interesting line. Uh, we haven't seen uh, too much of it. I have to be completely honest with you. And there comes the Light Heart, which uh, yeah. basically gets you to search the other field spell, which is the Rush Phobia. Exactly. Yeah, which is going through, and uh, Daniele will get to search the uh, most likely, yeah, either one of the Star Frost or the Rush Heart. Yeah, and this is actually great uh, stuff uh, by Daniele, because as you mentioned, uh, once the light art goes to the graveyard, you can special summon it back uh, if you control the visor. So it's a cute little yeah. engine that gets things going. Uh, and it's nice that we get to see this uh, such diverse build of uh, tier elements uh, adapting to the new list and the new cards. Yeah, here comes the rush. I really like it because basically you put up a lot of bodies on the field and yep. also they have this their so-called monster reborn basically, which is the arrival. Exactly. Here it comes. Here is the arrival, which can bring back the vices from Graveyard. Already much better than, uh, you know, other version of uh, Tier Elements. Yeah. Because usually when they get Abyss Dweller, they are not really able to do much. Daniele instead uh, trying his best to stay in this game and uh, do something about it. Yeah, because basically, mo uh, against most of other uh, tournament matchups, uh, basically shuts down all the strategy. Yep. And here with the Star Frost, basically, you get you into the game faster. So, good stuff from him. Considering his options and this face down card. Uh he is about to use it and it's super polymerization. Ooh. Wow. Whew. Didn't see that one. What? Man. But let's see it. 
to his full potential. Uh, uh, Daniele not that happy about it, but he can already summon back one because of the vices there. Yeah, of course not this turn because of a beast dweller. So that's uh, I think a really strong play by Lorenzo. Uh, we didn't see that coming. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's huge here. Daniele not happy about it, uh, and uh, the pressure is on him. His opponent has so much, he can even bring back the Merli to try and mill free, so uh, great stuff by Lorenzo. I think he was very well played by him, uh, just, it's, you know, activating yeah. the Dweller straight away. Especially, ooh, and we see ooh. another great card, the Strudo. Uh, the, the good thing is that it is Runic uh, tier elements, but he didn't use a Runic spell. Yeah. So, next turn, he has the battle phase, yeah. which is huge. So now we could see a Black Rose Dragon. I don't think that's in the deck, <laughs> but could have been cool if it was. What do you think he's trying to go for here? Because of course, Archive Fabrics is not an option anymore. Yeah. Uh, here, I think he just goes, uh, yeah, um, with the field spell, it will try to destroy the fountain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because basically there are three uh, defense monsters on the field, and as we said before, if the Rash Phobia is face up, you can destroy one card on the field, and uh, I think it makes sense to destroy the the fountain here. Let's, Let's see, see. But we might see a runic spell. He's considering it. It means he gets to draw three cards if he does, uh, but no battle face. Uh, and he does. At the end, he decides to go for it. This is huge. Uh, he will be able to draw three cards thanks to the fountain. Gets rid of uh, the Destrudo. And yeah, that's, uh, I think, so much advantage coming through his way. But he probably used the effect, as you mentioned, to pop the fountain. Uh, which is uh, great stuff uh, by Daniele, at least uh, preventing, uh, you know, and forcing his opponent off uh, the draw free. Uh, he goes for Nessie. Yeah. It's a huge 50 50, Ooh. and he whiffs. Uh, so Nessie is sniped uh, by Lorenzo, and uh, wow. I think he has seen enough. Uh, Daniele picks up his cards, and it is Lorenzo who takes this game one. What a match, honestly, completely dominated by Lorenzo. Went first and showed us uh, some of his tricks. Uh, to be fair, we didn't see much of the runic package, but it was there and it was good enough. What made the difference was he knew what he was up against, so he opened Abyss Dweller, which just shuts down yeah. the deck from Daniele. But to be honest, uh, the Crystal Beast inclusion was uh, cool to witness uh, on his opponent's side instead. Uh, uh, what can we say? It will be the opposite thing. Now it's Daniele going first, uh, trying to set up his own Abyss Dweller. And sometimes that's how it, yeah, this mirror match exactly. goes. I mean, Abyss Dweller is, I think, uh, one of the most impactful cards against the mirror match or against the elements in general. And uh, Daniele now, I think, uh, will go first. Um, what do you think he is bringing from his side deck? Uh, we, we are seeing that he plays a, one copy of Antespel Fragrance, which I think uh, might be useful, even if he, he didn't really get the chance to see well Lorenzo's deck, because basically he didn't use uh, like most of his engine, yeah. just Tirlman's cards. It's interesting that he prefers that card. He obviously has the combo with Curious plus the Griffin to get it. Uh, some players opted for Eradicator, but Daniele thinks Antispell Fragrance is the better option. Uh, but he does have uh, Nibiru, yeah. which is going to come in. And a card I'm really interested about is actually the Spooky Dogwood. Um, it was uh, for many monks, it's not more disregarded as a useless card, but it has caught up a lot of popularity. I think Jesse Cotton over from Canada was one of the first players really using it and basically saying when we get close to timeout, it's of course going to shine. But in this matchup, if I go second and drop it, I basically go to like 20, 
probably closer to 30,000 life points. <laughs> and from that point on, uh, even if your opponent has established a board, they're not killing you, you exactly. know? So you're <laughs> gonna grind. And then uh, it's an interesting choice. Uh, on the other end, uh, instead, uh, what do you think Lorenzo is gonna try to do? Uh, Lorenzo, on the other hand, has Nibiru as well. Yeah. So he's playing three copies. Also, the Lava Golems, mm -hmm. which are interesting alongside with the Pankratops. And they also were doing wrestling, which... Uh, we it will be seeing. interesting to see. But without further ado, our players are ready, so let's jump to game two. And here they are. Let's see what Daniele opens up with. As mentioned, the priority is a Beast Dweller. But I have to say, the runic cards help a lot against Abyss Dweller. Yeah. You even have actual outs uh, when they activate it. So let's see. I still give the upper hand to Lorenzo. I really like his unique build. Uh, but Daniele is not one to go down without a fight. Gonna take some time and start things off with terraforming. He has uh, two different options, of course, but usually it is the Perla Rhino. Let's see which one he does go for, and it is. Yeah. Yeah. Not a big surprise. Perla Rhino just great opening by itself, uh, maybe into the Rhino Heart if the end is looking more on the weaker end. Uh, but it is instead the Merli. Interesting. Yeah, maybe he might be holding uh, yeah, the, the Brandon and Hyde Spirits, which he does. Ooh, and without uh, go for, as you mentioned, Brandon and Spirits. Brandon and Hyde Spirits, a really cute addition to this deck. Uh, allows you to do a lot by yeah. itself. And I think uh, it's worth it. I, I really don't mind it. Uh, if it was uh, already a consideration before, uh, you know, Tactical Masters and the new Forbidden Limited list, I think it got even better now. And uh, I was watching at uh, Lorenzo's deck. Mm -hmm. He also plays Gamma, which I think it's uh, very good actually, because he can afford it. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Now we most likely are gonna see the mill 8 combo where you just destroy Kid Kalos, get them early, and then send the top 8 cards of your deck to the graveyard, obviously looking for the one copy of Anti-Spell Fragrance, uh, but instead it seems as if uh, he will not activate the effect and just normal summon the Merli. Very interesting. He goes for the Vices right away and will instead activate it. Interesting stuff. Yeah. Different lineup from uh, Daniele. We should go for the uh, Reichhardt. Looks like Lorenzo doesn't have any response. And uh, yeah, we'll be able to search the right shot as well yeah once again you get the other fuel spell the primitive planet uh, and as we saw in the previous game uh, this is the usual setup uh, by daniele where you still are able to do the same you you will activate the kit Kalos, get them early back from the graveyard mill eight uh, but on top of that you have this which gives you an additional line of interruption i do like it uh, and it's working out for daniele Also, because the right card, of course, is level 4. Yeah. And uh, we know what level 4s are good at uh, in this matchup. So, yeah, let's see this top 8 uh, mill cards. Uh, okay, there is one good one. And I guess the Rhino Heart uh, can count, but a little underwhelming outside of that. Yeah, uh, an okay mill, I would say. Yeah, I would say a under average, really, yeah. but uh, below average mill, but you take it, uh, at least uh, it's not 
a complete disaster and uh, he can get either to the Sharing, which is an option. And he does, I think. I can't quite tell yet. Yeah, I think he did. So Sharing is added to the end uh, and now we could see either if he wants to commit for the Scareclaw engine or instead continuing with this tier Laman play. He does. So he goes right away for the primitive planet. Reich Phobia. Considering his options, he might just get to the Rikar. He does. So not a surprise, as expected. This is the one you call the, the monster reborn of the set, uh, the arrival, and now it's really on Daniele what he wants to do with this. He can go for a link summon, because then you get back from the graveyard once again the link one, as you are controlling vices, which is really cool. And this is what we're gonna see here. I'm really curious to seeing where where yeah. I want to end up with. Exactly, this is something we have not yet seen. Uh, we could get to a curious, depending if he wants to go for the danger package, uh, but yeah, it's uh, just uh, asking his opponent uh, for some reference, uh, and he ends with the Baron, which is, I think, a new ending board uh, for uh, the Tierleman decks. Yeah, something we haven't seen this weekend. I mean, I really like it. Now it gets a danger. Interesting order, <laughs> again, <was> uh, sniped. <laughs> sniped off, but it's nasty, so it's just gonna check uh, if he has uh, Jackalope uh, remaining, I believe, uh, and he will get to the Jackalope. Yep. It's, uh, it's a good start. You can get to the Curious, as mentioned. Uh, obviously, the Dweller is much, much better, but it's not stopping anytime soon, uh, and he will activate the Jackalope right away if he feels like that's the best option. And even if he gets sniped, it doesn't matter. You get a different attribute. Let's see. Okay. So Nessie unfortunately gets uh, sniped. The Jackalope was by far better, but at least, as mentioned, you get a different type on the field in the Jackalope. If you want to prioritize getting the Curious down, you can just get the early back from Elf. This is what he's doing. So this could be a Curious, uh, and I think uh, it is what we're gonna see. Such a great card that allows you to pretty much uh, look for any card in your deck. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is a different lineup. We said that uh, a lot of our players this weekend decided to go for uh, different engines in their decks, yeah. and I think this is uh, very powerful also. I mean, with the Chorus and the Gryphon as well, basically you have access to pretty much everything. And indeed, we saw Daniele siding in the anti-spell Fragrance as well. Now he's considering uh, Zephyros as one of the options. Uh, of course, that would be important for trying to go into the Abyss Dweller. And he does it, the Zephyros. Let's see, he's trying to look for one of these other names. Rhino Art would be insane. Uh, he, it's uh, Merly, unfortunately, but won't be able to do too much. Uh, let's see. And he goes into the Shiring, so the Abyss Dweller is already guaranteed, and I think he did mill the Anti-Spell. Yeah. So Anti-Spell Fragrance uh, is sent off the top, uh, so he pretty much can end on the Abyss Dweller plus uh, Anti-Spell if he feels like it. Uh, this looks like uh, will be Daniele's game uh, if there isn't a miracle from uh, Lorenzo. What an opening. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is very, very good stuff from uh, Daniele. Yeah. Uh, this is impressive. This is so much advantage. Uh, you summon the Zephyros, get back the primitive planet, uh, and then you can go for Dweller on top of this is oh yeah you don't wanna <laughs> you don't wanna send that to the graveyard you wanna be careful with what you go for but yeah that's uh, why you should go for and as mentioned just go to the griffin and then the abyss dweller and this is uh, 
I think uh, almost the unwinnable opening, right? Yeah. You uh, get rid, you set the anti spell, uh, and this is Abyss Dweller, anti spell, Griffin, Baron. What is this opening uh, even losing to? <sighs> I'm struggling to see it. Probably like double evenly matched, if even. So. Wow. What a start. Uh, and now Lorenzo needs to pick up uh, something. Uh, I would say at the least insane. He's not even playing evenly, but Lorenzo is playing Lava Golem. Yeah. So if he picks up a Lava Golem, maybe that could be an option. But what a start from Daniele. He flips the, <laughs> the spell Fragrance, and uh, does Lorenzo have the Lava Golem here? Okay, so one of his runic cards is the way he started things off. Uh, of course, uh, the Sprite Elf uh, helping things get even more complicated as you cannot target uh, the Baron or the Griffin. I think Daniele is considering his options. That is the Flashing Fire which is gonna try and destroy the Elf. I don't think you care too much yeah. about it, I would say. But, ooh, the Abyss Dweller is chained. And uh, another runic coming down from Lorenzo. Let's yeah. see if there is a response. Uh, there isn't. Uh, and this means uh, Anti Spell Fragrance gets to resolve. Uh, Let's see. Does he have the Lava Golem? Yeah, but even then, yeah. uh, Abyss Dweller now has resolved, uh, which is gonna shut down a lot from his opponent. Uh, are you surprised at all that he decided to go for the dog, we can say, instead <laughs> uh, of uh, the usual uh, level 2 fusion? I guess... Uh, yeah, I mean... Uh, on one end, I think Lorenzo maybe doesn't have so much going on because, mm -hmm. I mean, he is considering what he could do. Yeah. Yeah, even if, as you said, even in the chance he has the Lava Golem. And which there he goes. So Lava Golem was in the end, uh, but it might be not an act by itself. The anti spell was so, so strong. Uh, of course, uh, still going to help out uh, quite a bit here. And Daniele is not happy to witness it. Also because he's left uh, top deck. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, this could be enough uh, if it comes down to it. Getting rid of Chu. Let's see, Lorenzo is really considering his options. Uh, going for the Jerry makes sense. Uh, and now he gets to send the top three cards on his deck. Luckily, the driver, because that would have been uh, his next draw. So you can push forward, go for a Time Thief uh, Redoer, forcing out the Abyss Dweller. And this is uh, beautifully, beautifully played by Lorenzo. Just fighting as hard as he can. Of course, he has to skip the battle phase. Uh, but Time Thief Redoer essentially means that his opponent uh, will be forced to activate the Abyss Dweller and then will be cut off short. Yeah. I think it's uh, uh, yeah, really some nice, uh, some nice plays yeah. by Lorenzo. Here, I think he, he did what he could. Um, that was what he had. And uh, now it's back to Daniele, which uh, yeah has a rebuttal face. Yeah, he's forced uh, to yeah. go for uh, the Abyss Dweller right now. But instead, uh, this impermanence is actually pretty nice. Because uh, it forces him not to use the Abyss Dweller. This impermanence changes a lot. Uh, it was really well played by Lorenzo, but Daniele in the end uh, still in a comfortable position. <laughs> essentially riding this Lava Golem uh, to the game three, but still. Another turn for the runic player. 
Can he pick up anything useful? The problem is now the runic cards are completely useless as anti-spell is already on the field. Face up. I don't think it's that common when you see Lava Golem being able to stick for these many turns. Uh, and yeah, Daniele is now yeah. forced uh, to activate the Abyss Dweller and uh, it will all come down to whether Daniele is able to close the game before Lorenzo access his graveyard again. And I'm looking Lorenzo chances more and more. Let's see if Daniele can pick up one of his combo cards. He's really trying to push this last damage while taking a thousand from Lava Golem. Yeah, Lorenzo really needs to pick up something to come back. Because now Daniele uh, also drew... Let's see if uh, he revealed what we drew into. Yeah. Nothing too relevant. He moves to the battle phase. Pushes 3200 damage. Uh, and leaves Lorenzo with one more turn to fight back into this game. Uh, can he pull this off? Uh, He has a lot of options, uh, potentially, from the top. Uh, maybe the face down is something relevant too. Could be one of the runic cars, uh, could be one of the possible options. Uh, he's telling, so we're talking to the judges, of course, about uh, uh, this being uh, quite a tough game uh, for the top eight. But eventually just sets face down another card and plays back to Daniele, who will take a thousand life points damage and will be able to attack for game potentially. Yep. Where did he draw? Okay, over the finish. Okay, and it goes, yeah. goes to the battle phase and this is enough. Uh, as life points were being updated, it is Daniele who takes it with a really weird, I gotta say, game two with this Lava Golem just ticking on the field. But what an opening from Daniele. Yeah, I mean, we saw very good stuff from him, especially because we got to see the Curious combo. Yep. He also got to mill the Anti-Spell Fragrance, which was great because he had to get that with the Gryphon on the field and then with the Baron, the setup yeah. was amazing. The setup was absolutely insane. Sprite Elf, uh, Baron, as you mentioned, Abyss Dweller and Anti-Spell Fragrance. Uh, I don't think you could ask for four more, but due to the Lava Golem, Lorenzo was actually up yeah. there. If he would have picked up one of his uh, tier elements and had the chance to fight back, uh, honestly, that had. game, I think, was his... Regardless though, as we mentioned that the stakes are high and the level are even higher for these two Italian players. So we can quickly go through what we think Lorenzo is going to try and do going first in this final game three. So he's playing Cold by the Grave, which I think we will go in. And also the Secret Village of the Spellcasters, which uh, an one. is a very interesting tech. I'm seeing Skill Drain. Mm -hmm. Which I think it's uh, something that we haven't seen this weekend at all. Maybe we will see it coming. Who knows? But on the other end, uh, of course, uh, Daniele will side out anti spell fragrance uh, potentially and put in the one card that I mentioned that I really want to see, which is Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood. I'm really looking forward to seeing Daniele open that card. Uh, the least. Uh, played and popular sister out of uh, the well-renowned ones but i think it's great in this match yeah. just look at the amounts of special summons yeah i mean uh, we haven't seen a lot of players relying on this card i think no. during the last months it was quite a bit more popular yeah but uh, slightly getting up there yeah. but still really hasn't found the you know that actual performance where you say wow this card yeah. is actually good but on the other end, uh, Psyframe Gamma, again, another weird one, but considering uh, there is a lot of runic in the deck, 
usually against Tillemans, Gamma is, uh, um, I would say, mediocre at best. Uh, you can negate a name, uh, but you always have to be careful because if you activate it on the Tillemans, then they can use the graveyard effect. So it's really tough to use it uh, to a good level. But I think using it to stop the fountain search is actually pretty nice and it can be a two for one. Yeah. So I think Daniele will side that in. Uh, regardless, uh, we can go back to the table for this final game three for top 16. And here they are for one of these two Italian duelists. This will be the last game for YCS Utrecht. Lorenzo going first, trying to set up once again his Abyss Dweller. Can he do it? Can Daniele stop him in his tracks? Let's see it. Foolish Brutal Goods. Already we might get into that Crystal Beast engine, which I'm really a big fan of. Yeah, it's one another addition to the deck, which is very powerful because he gets yep. you into the combo. And we do see it, so he will add the Crystal Beast uh, Emerald Tortoise to his end with the Trap Card alongside a Field Spell, uh, which I think it's uh, really, really fun to witness. Yeah, he got the Fountain, which... Uh, it's interesting. Yeah. Okay, he's going for the Shireen. And he does discard the, the Emerald Tortoise. Woo! And he does hit a name. So, great stuff. And here you can see another interesting addition, uh, or rather synergy to the deck. Uh, as the Emerald Tortoise is an Aqua Monster, you can use it uh, as material for Kid Kalos. But Daniele actually hits a name, uh, which makes this kind of interesting. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he really needed it. This offense is very powerful. Yeah, of course, you really want to eat uh, Chew, which is a big uh, uh, if. But if you do that, uh, then uh, you can actually disrupt your opponent plays. In this case, uh, Daniele is not going to be super happy about it. But, I mean, what can you even say? I think, regardless, uh, the big difference, as mentioned, is uh, uh, if he got the Fountain, it's actually a good question, because on the one side you would say he doesn't have Runic cards, on the other I think uh, he has Runic cards, yeah. because you don't commit, uh, you have uh, right away a couple of draws, uh, and if you mill, as he did, the Runic cards, uh, each Runic card just gets better and better and better and better. Yeah. And as we saw in game one, he didn't actually push enough with the runic card. He just activated the default and kept it. And as mentioned, uh, milling a name was great for Daniele, who can now get to the Drago Stapelia right away. So I guess, lucky or not, uh, it's a matter of uh, percentages and Stapelia comes down on turn one from Daniele. Let's see if Lorenzo considered this possibility and as a way to play around this. Uh, this Tapelia might hurt. Uh, yeah. Indeed, Lorenzo is considering maybe his, if changing his strategy. And now we get to see actually a Merli coming down to send the top three card of the deck. Uh, and Daniel allows it. Uh, okay. Just one runic name, which is... Uh, Pretty decent, but of course uh, not exactly what Lorenzo was hoping for. He wanted to mill a Tierlemont of the one he has. Let's see. Is he gonna just try and force out the Stapelia on the Kid Kalos? Uh, for sure an option. But finally we see the Fountain. What a card. And yeah, there are... Here comes Destruction, uh, Special Summoning, one to the Extra Monster Zone, and then uh, I think he draws three cards, yep. which is so good. I think uh, yeah. this is uh, a really interesting uh, opening. Uh, on top of that, we get to see Jerry's effect as a second copy of the Fountain was sent. 
to the graveyard and this is a huge huge start uh, from Lorenzo yeah I mean uh, milling this uh, runic cause was very good for him because now he get to draw three cards yeah and honestly like this is really just proving why he's in the top 16 and why maybe some of these other duelists which are at YCS Utrecht should have considered uh, this deck, uh, which instead, as you mentioned, is probably played by yeah, only Lorenzo. By, yeah, maybe by him. And even possibly by himself yeah. alone, yeah. So now Daniele taking his time to consider his options, uh, or rather when he wants to activate this Tapelia if he just waits for the Abyss Dweller to shut it down. Um, he goes for it, uh, it seems. Or no, okay, they are just uh, trying to memorize, I think, uh, which of the tier elements were used. Okay, so we do see finally this Tapelia being used on the Kit Kalos. This is trying to stop the mill 5 from resolving, but we have to start <laughs> to take a look at the clock. There are only four minutes remaining and a card that might be in Daniele's deck already is Ladybug that gains a thousand whenever it's sent to the graveyard but now as always a beast dweller which is yeah not that great though the stabelia is there to stop it. yeah uh, so. again we saw we, we saw that uh, milling that merely for daniele was very relevant yeah it because was otherwise huge. it would have been you know a completely different game here the abyss dweller uh, really doesn't do the job he did in game one and now we see a second copy of Fountain. Does he have another runic card? He does not. Instead, he goes... Okay, yeah, okay. that would have surprised me a bit. He goes for a line we have not yet seen too much of, but essentially just trying again some life as we are getting close to timeout. And this makes or pretty much a lot of pressure on Daniele. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it makes sense uh, because Lorenzo is uh, playing the morning uh, on the side deck, yep. so it just comes in uh, whenever time uh, is approaching. And uh, here we are seeing uh, Lorenzo's activating the Abyss Dweller and Daniela responding with this tabella. Let's see if there is a response uh, here. Nibiru actually Ooh. discarded, which probably might have been the last card, but Nessie now summons itself to the field. And the sharing, I think Ooh. Daniele is playing as fast as he can. With two minutes remaining on the clock, Daniele just wants to play as fast as possible, not losing to these 10 addition of 1,000 life points. This is going to be one of those games where you just can't look away because it's going to be over in a blink of an eye and who is going to advance is not yet obvious. Do you think at the end it could come down to this Merlin attack position? Uh, it could be. I think uh, enter battle phase is declared by Daniele who doesn't want to play around uh, and just uh, wants to push. Uh, if there is uh, something face down from Lorenzo, this might be an issue. Let's see if he has anything to stop the damage from coming, uh, or Daniele might just steal this away from himself. There is a super polymerization, one of the few cars to actually do it. We could see a self uh, even polymerization, but what a way to go. Wow. Wow. I think, yeah, you do a self-polymerization and then uh, you basically prevent, as mentioned, your opponent from pushing the damage. This is heartbreaking from Daniele. You can see him shaking his head. He knows that this is now almost an upfield battle. 
Wow. I mean, incredible. As in game one, we were not expecting Super Poly at all. And uh, this is uh, a game yeah. changer. Yeah. He gets even more names to the graveyard. So this might be over right now during the battle phase. Because what a way, actually, to come back into this game. Wow. In the end, it might be the side deck copy of uh, Munin which wins this top 16 match. What a way to end this tournament for Daniele. And now Lorenzo's just put up a, a wall. Yeah. Yeah. This is absolutely tough. Super polymerization, one of the cards that could have saved Lorenzo, he has it. What can you even do? Daniele didn't think he could waste much longer to do it. Uh, and time is called uh, probably now during the battle phase, which means not even the ladybug uh, is an option. Uh, and uh, I think uh, Daniele is trying to consider what he can do to still away and stay in this match. Absolutely tough. Uh, I'm pretty sure we are still in the battle phase. Yeah, we should be. Uh, I would be surprised if we were not, because uh, it would mean, uh, on the one hand, honestly, you just uh, could tell that the only solution would be the ladybug. But then I think you still lose, because if that's the case, we get into a sudden death match and then Lorenzo is the one who gets to attack next, so let's see. Uh, it's uh, pretty much over from this point on. Uh, it's just Daniele trying to figure out a way to deal this thousand life points. So while they figure it out, I think we can just uh, quickly go back to us uh, and uh, wait for the decision and the judge to clarify what's going on. So for now, as mentioned, uh, we are just witnessing this game three in which uh, pretty much Lorenzo goes first. He tries to set up his board with a beast dweller, but Avnis comes down from Daniele. He gets the name. It gets the Stapelia, which seems as if that is all you need uh, to win the game. Because you stop the Abyss Dweller, and that's what happened. Essentially, the Runic player just tried to set up his board as good as he could. Drew three cards, just uh, build a little bit of a wall. But the weak point was this merely in attack position. He set two cards face down, and on the back of my head, I was already thinking... Uh, the only way I could see this is super polymerization, self super polymerization to take this uh, away. When uh, we uh, go into this, uh, of course, uh, it is Daniele who then understands the situation. He knows because of, by the way, a side deck card. A side deck card. Because the Munin, which you could see on the field, uh, which gained a thousand life points, uh, was there. And that was how he could go for it. But as you can see here, we are back into the game. What they clarified is that as soon as Daniele saw that he had nothing, Daniele declared that he was leaving the battle phase. So we are right now into the main phase two. So we are in main phase two. Daniele didn't want to continue. And he has only his main phase two to close this one. Yeah. Can he find the ladybug and just try and even this? That's the main option. That will be incredible. Um, I think that's the only one he really needs to go for. Yeah, the only thing I am uh, interested in is that even if he finds it, then he gains a thousand love points, which means they are both a nine thousand. But 
that's not enough. Yeah. He needs to deal some more damage. Uh, otherwise, we go into a sudden match where sudden death means the first player who deals damage at the end is going to be the one on top. And I still think in that case, Lorenzo might be the one ahead. Regardless, I mean, kudos to Daniele for trying his best uh, and finding his uh, one and only win condition, which is uh, the Curious at this point in time. Uh, as mentioned, he's just trying to go for Curious into the Ladybug to gain a thousand life points. I think uh, his opponent is considering it at the same time. Yeah, he just now has been forced uh, to Stapelia. I think the idea from Daniele is I get rid of the Munin, then uh, my opponent doesn't have a battle phase to deal damage back yeah. to me, and maybe I can win once again. But yeah, for that now, be reasonable. Yeah. that's uh, totally reasonable, I believe, uh, and uh, Daniele is correct in trying his best to stay in this game. I couldn't quite tell what the face down was. Yeah. But yeah, now we see the counter. And I think, yeah, the plan is clear. It is the Curious into the Ladybug. Let's see. Has Nibiru. Ooh, but he does have, uh, I think, Nibiru. Yeah. He goes for Nibiru, Ooh. which stops the Ladybug and the Curious from coming down. This game never fails to disappoint. Let's see. And there is the handshake from Daniele, who was trying his best to get to this ladybug and even the score, but what a match. And in the end, it is Lorenzo after an hard fought Italian, all Italian top 16, who advances to the top eight and claims his spot with one of the unique decks in Top Cut, Runic Tier Elements. So what a match it was, honestly. A show-off, and you can see it on top of the deck, a show-off of just what they had and what their deck could do going first. Yeah, I mean, the deck was incredibly insane, in my opinion. We picked it up for a reason. Uh, it was the only player playing Runic Tournaments in this format, and uh, I think it's paying off incredibly well. I really like the strategy also to play in cards such as Foolish Bullet Goods to give you easy access to your field spells. And also, we have to say that he was brave enough to siding in Nibiru by going first. Absolutely. And we were not seeing it at all. Which means that basically he sealed the game even though Daniele was basically going to even the score with the life points. Yep. And uh, it basically Lorenzo came back into the game out of nowhere. It was absolutely great what you said. Uh, I think... Uh, the Tierlemen deck was known uh, mostly with dangers, but what we have seen in this top 16 is brand new. On the one end, uh, trying uh, to use you know this runic engine, trying to pretty much turn it into a light swarm deck where you try to mill as many cards as possible, and then any runic spell is basically a plus one because yeah. uh, you're gonna shuffle them back with fountain. On the other end, instead, the scareclaw I think was surprising uh, as well. It essentially reminds me more of the pre-forbidden limited list uh, danger tier element deck. It's basically an engine which allows you to go into Curious pretty easily and then I think out of the two, the, the board built by Daniele is the most impressive one. Yeah. Like Probably the best we have seen all weekend. Yeah, I mean we saw him uh, summoning the elf alongside with the Baron, <laughs> Dweller, Dweller, and anti -spell, the anti -spell, I and mean. even more on the side. So I think uh, that is one of the best possible openings you can see in this top 16. And now Daniele advances to a pretty stacked uh, top eight, uh, as we will be able to show you guys. So before we further ado, I think we can quickly show the bracket uh, that we went through. And as you can see here, Diego just keeps on winning and winning. And he's up against uh, Jack Verma 
on the other end, Joshua Smith, again, one of the top players advancing and is now, as we get communication from the last match remaining, still to be completed, while on the other side of the bracket, we see Alex Robertson, the one we got on stream, playing Rika and again trying to advance to the top eight. We will be able to pretty much go for you guys and tell you all of the matches result uh, while we go through the other side of the bracket once again uh, with uh, Dinka Bui and of course the match we just witnessed between the Italians uh, finally in the last uh, side of the bracket uh, Josh Rossman, Thomas Rose both uh, really good players uh, and uh, Daniel against uh, Julian uh, to fight for the last spot in the top eight I think we still have a lot of action for you guys, so thank you for staying with us. There are three matches remaining, three matches to crown the 2022 YCS Utrecht champion. But, as you all know, Ed is ready with the winner, the one and only Tier Lament Runic player for the event. Let's hear it from Lorenzo. Hi guys, yes I am joined by Lorenzo who's just got into the top eight by winning this very long hard fought game. So first of all, congratulations. Do you want to talk us through some of the confusion that was happening at the end there? Because there was a lot of talking with the judges after time. Yeah, the thing is uh, we were in battle phase, but he says to me that he wants to leave battle phase to go to main phase. So it, it was no problem and uh, we skip battle phase, go to main phase and then uh, the last phase of, the, of the, the match was the main phase two. So just going through that game, there was a lot of things. So you obviously, you had a lot of Abyss Dweller plays to try and slow down at what Daniele was doing. You had a super poly in round one as well, and you hit Destrudo and Nessie. So you just stormed through game one. So were you feeling confident from that point? Yeah, yeah, it was a pretty um, uh, particular situation because I didn't recognize the effect of the, his field spell to pop my field spell. So I would uh, have uh, activate my runic uh, before so, so that I, have, I can draw three. But uh, I, I was able to shot the Nessie and then uh, it was over. And then game two, I mean, Daniele was building quite a huge field with things like Baron and Dweller. And there was an anti spell fragrance in there that I imagine was slowing things down. Then, but you lava golems to remove some of those problem things. But despite all that, he ended up taking the round. So when that was happening, how were you feeling? Yeah, uh, the second game was pretty difficult because uh, uh, he started with anti spell, uh, Gryphon, uh, Baron, Elf, and then uh, I have to um, to to hope that the set was wasn't impairments because. Uh, uh, in, your t in his turn, I can do Redor, each in Dweller, and then in my turn, Redor, um, uh, Reino Art effect, and then, uh, but it was in Paris, so it was uh, impossible. So that was one of the big turning points, was that input. That was when you just scooped and went right onto the next game. And that was, you know, pretty good because he went straight into Dragostopelia and tried building those. But you were building a huge field, and then you built those life points, and then it was just building that huge wall. So what was going through your mind in those final couple of minutes? Because with about one minute left, you could see Daniele was really trying to speed through it. So what were you thinking in those final minutes? So uh, the third game, uh, I made a combo that is not uh, the regular combo because uh, we are in time. So I have to summon Munir to gain life points. So I summon Dweller just to, um, to make space on next Monster Zone to summon Munir. And then uh, I, I set Super Poly, set uh, the, the runic that um, uh, can that uh, target one monster and that monster cannot attack. So I was pretty comfortable also because I draw Nibiru. So I can stop him to go into Curioso, uh, Curious uh, and uh, make uh, combo. So was a pretty, it was a wall. Yeah, it certainly was. And a hard fought battle that finally got into time and you've come out on top. You've won it. You're now in the top eight, which is very exciting. So best of luck in those upcoming games. I hope they go well for you. Guys, don't go anywhere because we've got the top eight feature match coming right up. <laughs> 